I'll show you. I had that, the wall here initially. And so that was destroyed by the very high tides in 2005. And I had, I built this um, quite some time back, over the years, and that was destroyed. So I rebuilt it. Anote Tom is obsessed with the sea. He's the man in charge of a vanishing nation. The seas that have supported life here for 4,000 years are rising because of global climate change. It's Tong's job as president of the country to decide what to do. For quite some time I did not sleep because I, I had no solution to a problem that nobody has a solution to. What happens to us as a people in the future? Do we disappear as a culture? So these are the issues that keep me awake. Tong must decide the fate of his people. Should they stay and fight or evacuate their island home? Tong's nation is called Kiribati. 33 atoll islands stretching across the Pacific Ocean, seven hours flight from Australia. 10 hours from the United States. Strips of land on the edge of the world so low that from the water, they seem to vanish. In Kiribati, it's very hard to see the next island. 10 kilometers out or even 15 kilometers out, you can no longer see land. So how we located this, we, we use the reflection on, from the clouds. So that's how we navigate. Over there is Mayana, the next the most immediate, which is my island. So that's where I go fishing, when I go trolling. At his home on the island of Tarawa, the country's capital, Tong admits he has little time to fish these days. Since elected president in 2003, he spent much of his time sounding the alarm that his country is disappearing. Already we have uh, whole villages being washed out. There is no running away from the reality that the sea is rising. There is no running away from that reality. These images shot during a storm in 2005 are an example of what Tong and his people are fighting against. As greenhouse gases warm the planet, water expands, waves grow stronger, and seas rise higher, as much as two meters by the end of the century, says one study from the University of Colorado. For the country's 108,000 residents who live on narrow strips of land just two meters above sea level, it's a trend that spells disaster. We had one single large island. I think it might be possible to put seawalls around it, but uh, it's virtually an impossibility given the geography structure and the scatteredness of our islands. And so what, where does that leave us? We have to face the reality of it. And the reality seems to be that we have to relocate. The question is, how do we relocate? In 2008, Tong took his dilemma to the United Nations. Mr. President, on climate change, while the international community continues to point fingers at each other regarding responsibility for and leadership on this issue, our people continue to experience the impact of climate change and sea level rise. Here we were confronted with a number of countries wanting to uh, achieve more economic growth and arguing the case that, of course, they must not be uh, tied down to these stringent obligations. To me, it's offensive, it's insulting, because it's, it's so insensitive about the fate of a people. The people of Kiribati arrived on these islands 4,000 years ago, one of the last stops in humanity's migration out of Africa. The islands they settled stretched over an expanse of ocean the size of India. It's here at the southern tip that fishermen like 23-year-old Rabita Yobate feel the threat of global climate change most. Rabita says seawater has begun seeping into the water table, giving the well water his mother draws each day a salty taste. The frequency and size of his catch has also become less predictable. And then there's his 83-year-old father, Yobate. He's declared war against the rising tide, building a seawall and then standing guard over it each evening. 
The temperatures are getting hotter, and there's a change in the level of the sea. It's getting higher. These changes are affecting the food we grow. Before, our coconuts were big, but now they're as small as our fists. Coconuts are among Kiribati's chief exports. With fewer to sell, many like Robita are finding it harder to earn a living. Even so, Tong resists the idea of moving people off the islands en masse, creating a nation of climate change refugees. This is the last thing that I want to put forward as an option for our people, because um, having lost our homeland, uh, having lost our, our cultural identity, I don't think we want to lose our dignity. Tong needs to address immediate problems being created by climate change, like poverty and shrinking food supplies. So while he considers how best to move people off the island, he plans to develop the country's economy. The idea is to encourage the development of the Italians. There are people with more time to do it. We just need to be able to provide them with the opportunity to skill and whatever equipment they need. But convincing development organizations to invest in a country that won't be around in 50 years is not easy. For the first time, the UN agency specializing in agricultural development, IFAD, sends a team to assess the situation on Kiribati's most remote southern island, Arore. We would like to understand some of the challenges that you face with the environment. Uh, and is there any change that people have noticed? in weather, um, in the sea. Over the last few years, we've seen extreme changes in the environment. There has been a lot of damage to trees. Wells are salty. There is erosion along the coastline. And because we've had such little rain over the last few years, our crops are dying and there is no fruit on the trees. These are things we can't fix ourselves. If we think of what the, the president of the country is saying, that the, the whole survival of the islands over the next 50 years is, is in question, a challenge that we face is, is what happens in, in the course of this 50 years. Um, we've heard from the, 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 the communities themselves that they're, they're struggling to, to, to feed themselves. Um, so how do, we, how do we respond to this is, a, is an enormous challenge. Hartman's group helps islanders develop a plan one that tackles some of their most immediate problems, like the salination of drinking water, but also breaks new ground for those living on the front lines of climate change. Agricultural research, for instance, could contribute to improving soil fertility. Um, agricultural research could also contribute to developing uh, crop varieties that they can grow uh, in these areas that may increase productivity. So they move from subsistence to having just a, a little bit of surplus that they can sell for income generation. Um, so food security is a, is a critical issue here. This agricultural research centre has been set up to identify food crop varieties able to tolerate rising temperatures and grow in salty water. Tong hopes to turn islands like Arore into centers for food production, growing crops that could help feed populations on other islands where the impact of climate change is advancing much more quickly. But these are just temporary measures. Tong says the real challenge is to make those countries contributing to climate change take responsibility for its effects. We will be victims regardless of what happens. And we're just the ones on the front line now. And I think the point is, if nothing is done, then other countries and other people will be next on the front line. When do we start to sacrifice our standards of living for the sake of the future of this planet? The biggest challenge that I want to throw is, what are you going to do about the people that are, have become victims? This represents it's the single biggest moral challenge to humankind. And if it doesn't respond to this, then there is no credibility to anything. On the edge of the world, a nation's people wait. In just a few decades, they may have to leave these islands for good. And what was, 4,000 years ago, the end of humanity's global migration could see the start of its retreat.